Yeah. Um, but I mean, stuff like like Tiny Base especially makes me really excited about this space. And I hope that in the future, more applications are built to be local first. Um, and maybe on that topic, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the future. We usually try to end our episodes with uh, um, a topic like this forward facing. So how do you think uh, this model will evolve the, the local first model right. versus like traditional like cloud application development. Do you see this like expanding or do you think it'll just like kind of stay as a niche or like what do you, I don't know, what do you see the future as here? Oh gosh. Well, that's a good question. Um, firstly, you know, it is it is nascent, it is embryonic. So like I hope at least in the short medium term future, we start seeing more people building apps. Like, I, I'll be Frank, there's, there are not a lot of kind of headline showcase apps that really lean in to local first. Um, I'm sure you know of uh, Actual, which was a finance app that James Long built. Um, Excalibur is arguably uh, local first as well. And I see a few uh, where, you know, you're working in your browser and it's all local until you actually come to press save or something. And so that, that, that's pretty cool. But like there isn't a really totemic app from some big app provider that's like, yeah, that's that's an amazing example yet. Um, you know, Google Docs is, is not look first, right? Um, but like there will be some, some hopefully some moment like that where somebody builds a really spectacular app. It's fast, it's just beautiful. The user experience is killer and it works on a boat 50 miles offshore. <laughs> and we're like, okay, now everybody's gonna wanna copy that. And then they're gonna go back and like tear it down, like see how it was built and, and start kicking the tires on these things. There is a little bit of a risk, I think, with Local First that it looks a little bit like it's an R&D project coming out of the lab. It's got a bunch of cool computer science, CRDTs, woohoo. <laughs> but like, wait, are we actually solving any problems for any humans yet? Um, and like, we've just got to cross, cross that little early adopter chasm, I think. Um, so that's what I hope happens in the short to medium term. In, in the longer term, what I'm expecting, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll cover Tinybase's ears whilst I say this, like what I'm hoping in the long term is that we start seeing browsers that start to support this kind of model more natively, like you mentioned, you know, SQLite going into the browsers. You know, we, we, we had Web SQL and like back in the day, I was like, oh, we were so close. Even Google Gears is like, we've been through iterations of this stuff way back. Um, and, and, and yeah, maybe maybe there's some critical mass of de developer demand uh, as well as platform incentive. Well, I'm not sure if there's a platform incentive, but like, you know, maybe the browsers will start to include more of this stuff out of the box. Uh, and there's no need for things like Tinybase or CRC or whatever. And it just it's just a way that you build apps right from the start. And by the way, like the future is the past here because <laughs> for those of us that were around a little earlier uh, than the internet, like. Like this is how we always used to build apps. Like you built an app in the late '90s, it was uh, you know Visual Basic on Windows with a Access database in it, probably. And the the idea of the, ever connecting to the internet was kind of like uh, fairly foreign. So it's back to the future, really, building apps where you know the data, the logic, and everything is right next to the user. Um, it's actually not that heretical at all. It's more like more like Back to the Future. Um, but look, I, it is not ever going to be a panacea. That usual usual. Um, black and white, you know, scale of gray thing. Uh, there is a well, there's a wide range of classes of apps that are just never going to work as a local first, right? Uh, I don't think Facebook is ever going to be a local first app. There's no way I can load three billion people's <laughs> personal data onto my phone, um, and I don't want my bank to be a local first app either, right? Because I want all that data to be stashed away safely somewhere in uh, in Wall Street. But the uh, but the number of apps that will benefit from being local first is pretty high. Uh, I just think that maybe we haven't kind of popped out of the you know, like cloud only, cloud only kind of uh, way of thinking yet. And so, yeah, I think the big moment will be when we see some amazing, beautiful app pop out and people are like, yeah, I love it. Like what else can we build that's like that? And then symbiotically or simultaneously, we start to see the, the browsers providing more uh, platform support so that uh, it just works. Yeah. Well, I think there will always be, always be a need, even if browsers do add some better base primitives for things like Tiny Base, because it's like it's the mm -hmm. UX all or the DX, I guess, all the way up the chain that really makes a big difference, and that's something that I feel like user space code will always be required for. I was gonna say that that's that's how this stuff always works, right? People build the libraries they need, and then eventually, yeah. you know, we get query selector all. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
So back in episode 61, we uh, talked to Tuomas of Linear, and Linear is sort of built in this way where it's like local first in the sense that it stores everything locally and does syncing. And um, a great example of like how a very polished app can be built with this sort of technology. And, you know, go back to, to what you're saying about like, you know, originally all applications were local first, and then like we had, you know, internet connected apps. And, and it's it really interesting that, you know, the pendulum always swings, uh, but, you know, with every swing, something changes slightly. You know, it's not the same uh, place that we were before. So, like, before, you know, in the early, early days, we're just, like, no network co connectivity, so everything was local by, you know, necessity uh, or, or network to, like, a local area network maybe. Mm -hmm. and, and then you had more sort of, like, you know, the cloud era, everything being centralized. And now I feel like we're getting into the syncing era where it's like maybe more yeah. things are local, but we still want collaboration and we still want, you know, these richer things provided by the cloud. So it's like building yep. bridges between these two. It's going to be, I think, the next big effort. Yeah. I What I hope is the sort of the real symbol of this succeeding is that we never see any spinners again, right? Death, death to the spinner is like kind of a nice rallying cry here because I mean despite the fact that I now have a faster laptop than I've ever owned and I'm sure Google's data centers are bigger than they've ever been like I still seem to be watching just as many spinners as I ever did uh, except in the 90s I had no spinners whatsoever right because everything was as local it was great like spinners are a function of the internet and I would love to go back to a world where there are no spinners because yeah wait five seconds for something to happen and like I'll oh I'll just uh, you know command tab across to threads or Twitter like boom like there's another 10 minutes of my life gone so <laughs> what can I what, you know what can we do to help people stay in the in the in the zone with their productivity or in the flow or whatever and yeah I think banishing spinners is a big deal so I think uh, data sovereignty and everything aside like can we just get to where UX is like 16 milliseconds for everything or less Right. And yeah, sure, you can do some spinnery stuff in the background. I go, really don't care. Synchronize whatever you want on some background thread. But don't ever show a spinner to a user. Um, and I hope that's the thing that's different about the future. Um, and yeah, there's cloud, there's local, but there's no spinners. <laughs> there we go.